Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I see Linda and Doreen and Midge and Lorna. I feel like the uh, Romper Room Magic Mirror. I am so happy you guys joined me here today. And if you are watching the replay, thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I hope you will hit the like button if you're going to have a good time here. Um, I'm kind of distracted today. I was not feeling a thousand percent. I don't know if I've got a summer cold or allergies. And considering the way I'm feeling right now, I'm thinking it's probably allergies. <clears throat> we'll see how my voice lasts. But I just couldn't really concentrate on a whole lot. So, so we're going to do something easy. Because easy works when your brain is kind of, you know, clogged up, right? <laughs> you guys can hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay. Thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me okay. And I want to know. Oh, Sunny with a perfect temp for you, huh, Doreen? Awesome. Okay, good. Volume is good. Awesome. Um, so I this this thing. Hi, Studio Rat. Hanging down. Hopefully won't be too distracting. I'll make my picture a little smaller. Um, so it, and when I start working here, but it's the only way I can get the angle right so that all the light from all the other windows isn't crazy um, and have the height the right. It, I don't know. It's just easier for me. So hopefully it's not too distracting for you. Um, not quite sure how I'm going to figure my way around that. Hey, Anise, how are you? What are you guys working on today? And I will tell you about these little things. You might remember when I did the, um, I think it was when I hit 5,000 subscribers, I did the little giveaway where I made the journals, the Lacey journals. And then I guess I was having such a good time using up Lacey scraps that I started doing a whole bunch more. And I have no idea. I mean, I made all these little squares of odd sizes. And I don't remember what my plan was. <laughs> Sometimes I just do stuff because it feels good, you know, or the texture feels good or it's an enjoyable process. So I figured I would make this into a little lace just because book. Oh, I know. Before I get too started, I will show you. I did do this is some of the other stuff I did this week. I did a little a little weaving. The texture feels really cool. I think it could make a neat little mini journal book. I'm not so sure that weaving is something I will do a lot of. Hey, Corian, how are you? Um, I think weaving, I, I, I think for me, weaving is going to be kind of a background. I didn't get the same satisfaction of repetition that I get with stitching, but it feels yummy. So that, you know, that counts for something, right? <laughs> So I might make just a real mini one. This is very small. And then yesterday I had a whole bunch of just online meetings and I just grabbed scraps that were here on my desk and started uh, piecing them together. I need to make my, my face, my big face smaller here. There we go. Now you can see a little bit better. Uh, let's see here. Nope, I thought I could move that. Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So I'm thinking with this, it's going to be a wall hanging. Now, I did all the things that I could possibly do to make this more difficult for me. The easiest thing to do would have been, um, you know, to lay out a piece of interfacing. Ah, what did I do for the weaving? I had, okay, first I bought a bigger Shoshi, hello. Oh my goodness, I'm honored. Happy to have you here. What time is it for you in Israel? For the weaving, I bought a couple of little looms. Um, this is just a little hand lap loom and it came in two sizes. Um, I can put a link to it over in the group uh, later on. And it was this one was really nice because I could hold it on my lap. And then I got a table loom. And I think what I'm going to try with that is weaving a background with sari silk. And then I can embroider and do different things to it. But I just I haven't got that set up yet. So if mouse comes, I have to remember to show her that. 
So this, um, actually, Shoshi, I've been in, so inspired by you. I, I want to do a larger book now, larger than my my um, my small little guys. These guys are little, and I want to do a bigger book. Hey, Dina. Hi, I'm glad you joined us today from Canada. So do, don't do do as I did. Do, do it the right way. I should have... Um, you know, done some heat and bond or something to some interfacing on this. So it's kind of bumpy, but I figure, you know, once I start taking things to stitch to it, I'm not going to, you know, you're not going to see that kind of stuff. And this has just been really nice because I have learned at least in the last six months of learn of spending so much time working with textiles that working with commercial fabrics that have not, not been dyed by me, don't excite me. And so I've got a lot of yardage to dye. I wasn't going to take the time to dye this. But once I have everything stitched and I have it purposely kind of dangling, you know, so I can have stuff dangling, I am going to take my uh, paints and do some things to it. And then I'll start layering it up. And we'll see because I really want to be able, I, I get so much pleasure out of doing these and I want to be able to work larger with them and maybe have something that's like wall art. But since allergies made my head all stuffy, 2200 for you. Okay, so that's not too bad, right? So I had these little lacy things, but of course I can't just do, you know, making them into pages. So I need to link them somehow. And where's my oddball? That's my oddball size. So I just figured I would because they're going to be layered up so much. It doesn't matter what I'm doing here um, as far as how to join them. And all I've done with these, can you see the size of the lace? Actually, I can show you better with this. Uh, these are just little tiny pieces. I mean, the kind of stuff when you cut off, okay, like the in pieces, that's all I've done is just taken a piece of backing Colorado Blue Skies Boutique. I've forgotten your name, but welcome. Happy to have you here. Haven't seen you for a while. Uh, I just take these and just tack them on. That's all I'm doing just to get a first layer on. Isn't Shoshi's where If you have not seen Shoshi's Silk Road book. Oh, hi, Barbara. You have to go check it out. Do I have any mods here yet that can help me with um, the link? And Shoshi, I have to tell you that the other day I watched your video for like the 10th time and I saw something that I hadn't seen before, which was your beautiful book. Um, do I have any bling? Okay. Imagine this was the bling with all the sequins and everything on it. And with me, I have them in a clear box and they get all tangled up and show she had these little books that she made with just, you know, like cardstock pages and she just paper clipped the bling to that so you could turn the pages and see the bling that you wanted. And I thought that was brilliant. And I don't know why I must have just like looked away or missed or just thought, oh, I'm fine with my shoe boxes, but it made it so much better. So I'm now doing that with all my bling because it will make it so much easier to find and I won't be ripping things off. All right. Barbara's going to catch us on the rebound. I am just making some little, I need to connect these guys. Okay, and I want to keep them a decent, I think I'm going to make this cover will be a little bit bigger when I'm done. But I have, you know, the nice thing about a Just Because book, you do not have to make it a particular way. You know, I had one idea of how I was going to join these things, but I could change my mind and I could, you know, all of these individual pieces like this, these squares. Hey, Sharon, and hi, Joanne. Good early morning to you, Sharon. You could join these and make a concertina very easily and then tuck it, you know, inside this book. Oh, Barbara uses an elastic style Midori book for your napkins. That is an awesome idea, too. I don't like the plastic protector pages. That doesn't work for me, but I love that idea on the napkins. Wow. So, you know, just, I'm, I'm a rambling. I'm a rambling. 
And Sharon, don't leave today. Before you leave, I'll grab a piece of paper and show you the um, fold up thing that I was thinking about. Okay. So if I want it to be about like this, I just need I have an odd number. I just need to join it. This is kind of thicker. Thank you, Joanne. These are just using up the itty bitty pieces of your lace and just stitching them on willy nilly. I mean, really, I don't pay any attention. So if I want to hinge, do I have anything that's close to that? Here I am saying not to think so much and I'm thinking way too much. Scissors. Oh, thank you, Anis. You know, I, it's so funny to think that five years ago, I didn't have a sewing machine. I had no fabric. I had no real interest in textiles. And it just sort of boggles my mind. Yeah, there's a lot of juicy goodness. And I, I was telling somebody the other day <clears throat> that I could decide what fabrics I want to use for, you know, these little these little books, I could be blindfolded and just reach into my stash and I could tell because there's something about this size. I want them to feel a certain way while I'm working on them. Okay, I think I need three hinges. All right, so who's working on what today? And are we going to continue to talk about not being perfectionist or do we have another topic that we want to tackle today? I'd like to talk about finding your style. Because I think um, people stress about that and they shouldn't. All right. Pins would probably be smart. Um, that's good enough. I just want enough of an overlap to hold the pages together. I think this will work. If it doesn't work, you know, it's okay. We'll make it work somehow some other way. I just want to get them so they're actual pages. Yeah, it's the, you know, we, we didn't know what we didn't know. Um, you know, I didn't get kicked out of home ec, but, you know, where the, they did all the sewing, but I certainly didn't. It was not where I got my straight A's, let me tell you. That was for sure. And I'm leaving a little bit of space in between here because these are going to bulk up. I may wish that I'd left more space, but, you know, I'm cool with having an alligator mouth. Finding your style is a good one. Okay. Anis is couching. <laughs> well, it's it's late for you too, right? Hey, Nettie. You got your internet all straightened out? So, okay, let's ask the first question. Do you think you have a particular style? Just give me a yes or no. Do you think you have a particular style? And by style, it's, you know, can, can somebody look at your work and say, I know that that is Susan's work. I get that comment sometimes, which I confess I kind of like. Um, Nettie says she's got her internet all straightened out. That's good. That's been a struggle for you for a while, I know. Sharon says, I wish I'd known my style, style sooner just to stop some of my impulse buys that I thought I had to have, but turned out to not be my style now. Yeah, but I think that's, you know, in art, I think that's what happens is you have to experiment. And we experiment by copying the people that we, you know, whose work is calling to us. Absolutely, maybe works, Corinne. Yeah. Margaret says, I'm starting to find my style now at 80 years old. Anise says, I don't have that much style. What are you drawn to, Anise? What are your favorite things to work with? See, now, the reason I'm asking about style is that I've gotten some messages lately from people, and I'm trying to take them as um, just, you know, people sharing thoughts and not, not get depressed about it because you know whenever you get something that isn't a, a compliment you kind of go Ugh. linda says no it's with nature you know i thought you were a nature artist and how come you're not doing that kind of stuff and it was like ouch ouch and 
I don't know that that's necessarily style. I don't know. I think I have several styles. I think I am developing my textile style. I need thread. And yet that doesn't mean that I don't still love, this guy's not done yet, but I love doing this kind of work as well. And I don't feel like you only have one style. I don't know, maybe recognizable isn't the right, right phrase for it, but something that you really enjoy working with. I, I don't know, it just, it kind of bugged me that somebody's like, well, you're not doing nature stuff anymore. And I am, I don't share everything I do. A lot of the stuff I'm doing with nature right now is very much experimental. And it's not that I don't want to share my experiments with you guys. It's just nothing's, um, nothing's, there's nothing really to share. There's just a lot of, just a lot of play time. And I'm not, it's, it doesn't, it's not something that I really want to share with the world yet because I haven't figured anything out. I haven't figured out, you know, what I want to do about it. Anis likes old vintage style. Sharon says, Susan, for you for sure have a style. I always know when it's your post I'm looking at before I see your name. Well, that's nice. Margaret, you think you have several styles too? I would like to combine my textiles with um, my nature stuff. And that's kind of where I'm working toward. I'm hoping on this big wall hanging piece that I can, you know, bring in a little bit more of the nature stuff. Joanne says, I'm right there with you, Margaret. I'm 75 years old, feeling so young in crafting and wanting to learn more. Margaret says, I think maybe style is something that changes over time as we experiment with new materials, techniques, and tools. Yes. And we experiment by, um, I'm going to stab myself here, by copying people that we admire. And I will say that one of the, the ways that I learned what I loved was, you know, looking on Pinterest and looking on Instagram and looking in Google Photos and literally just, you know, making note of, you know, these are the colors I like, this is the textures I like, this is, you know, and, and I started to see the same people that I was liking over and over again. I'm just gonna do a running stitch here just to kind of get these things attached so I can get the pin out because I, this is a horrible needle. This is not very sharp because I stab myself all the time. Yeah, and we have to give ourselves that experimental time. You know, it's not that everything we, we do. The other thing I was thinking of the other day is uh, I actually um, started to pull up some call for entries for some shows uh, for some book art, alternative book art, I guess is what it was. And I wasn't eligible for the one that I wanted because I didn't live in the right area. But I was remembering um, the one and only uh, gallery that I had been in and the horrible experience I had with the owner of the gallery who decided to give us post-show critiques, which was really depressing, almost as bad as the art teacher. <clears throat> Sharon says, I've had a little playtime myself lately, Susan. I think it's hard to share some playtime because you have no idea even where you're going. That was me yesterday. It would have been boring to watch. Yeah. Margaret says, I think my style changes a bit with the seasons. I would agree. I think um, like I have a lot of eco printing that I have been meaning to do for a while. You know, I don't think that the outside studio space is really set up the way I want it to, but I really need to get the, the leaves out of the freezer. Even if you have several styles, Dina says your work is recognizable by far. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, looking for your style, it's, um, and you have to give yourself that time to explore. I mean, consider looking at other people's work as part of going to art school. I didn't go to art school. Maybe some of you did. Um, but I, that that's my art school is I go and I study. And when I see the same thing popping up in my, my likes list, you know, over and over again, okay, I really need a different needle. I know that this is something I need to dig in a little bit deeper. The other thing I notice is that even if it's something that I really, really like, it isn't always something that I want to make. 
Hey, Patty. Patty, could you do me a favor and grab Shoshi's um, the link to her channel so people can see her beautiful Silk Road book if they haven't seen it already? I'm glad you like my eco kits, Sharon. I, I definitely need to get back and do some more of those. Be some changes going on in the shop. I will be doing more of that sort of images. Hey, Leslie. Glad to see you today. I'm not worrying about tying these things off in knots, but I definitely need a different needle. This needle is kaput. Okay, what do you guys do with needles that are no longer sharp? I'm trying to figure out. My favorite needles are in my other stitching spot, and they are much smaller. So she says, my style, I just go to the study and do what I want. I love to create. Yes. And your painted textiles are just so inspiring. Okay. Do I, did I not take the, I didn't stitch that one. Okay. One's done. Let's just get the stitching in. I never quite as productive as I might be on my own because I'm rambling. Yeah, the digitals are just going to probably be prints of, you know, be the eco prints. And I'll, I have some of my dyed textiles that I was thinking would be some good prints, but you will not probably be seeing a whole lot of actual junk journal kits with envelopes and tags and that kind of stuff. I will give you papers that you can create things with yourself, but because that's what excites me. A Clemis, and I forget. I think you're in Germany, but I can't remember. Or is it in the Netherlands? And I, Angela, is that right? Is it Angela? Leslie sands her needles with a nail file. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate that link. If you guys have not seen, okay, Angela, I remembered right. Yay. I have so many needles. I don't know if you guys told you this, but I have like, my grandmother's needles, my mother's needles, my husband's grandmother needles, um, so many things. And uh, I'm thinking, I saw somebody take a bunch of needles and pins and just, you know, do the, let's see, do it like that in fabric you know, and then leave them out for rusting. And I'm thinking that might be something that I do with a bunch of these old ones. I can just keep rusting them over and over again. Sharon says, I steer more towards paper kits, kits myself. I can make all kinds of ephemera from a paper kit, not the other way around. Yeah, that's my thought too. <clears throat> so the shop will be, you know, evolving. Um, it's my love. It's what I, you know, digitally, what I enjoy doing most would be, um, the paper making and there are so many other people doing other kits that's fine i really want to be you know digital has never been was never going to be my main focus this is my main focus hey kathy how are you there's a really good video um I think it was the book depository did a couple years ago about finding your style. I thought it was very interesting. What are you working on today, Kathy? You have three needles. Oh my goodness. I have so many and now I have, I'm down to like two of my absolute favorites and I'm going to have to go down to the quilt store and see if they can help me figure out something that might be comparable. Cause I have no idea where they might've come from. Well, you know, some of these needles are like 60, 70 years old. And that's what I, you know, I made the mistake a lot. Well, I don't know if this is a mistake. A few years ago, before I really got into doing a whole lot of textile stuff, I dumped them all in the same containers. And that was a mistake. I don't keep them in the little, uh, you know, little cardboard things, which would have made more sense. No, a quilt store is not dangerous to me because it's all commercial fabric. I'm going to be selling off all my commercial yardage, any of my yardage that's printed that's commercially. I'll keep the, you know, decent sized scraps that I can dye or paint or, you know, do stuff to. But 
I have zero interest anymore in commercial fabric, no matter how beautiful it is. And it's, you know, I've got some of the Tim Holtz fabrics. I've got some really pretty fabrics. But even if I get um, a vintage fabric, well, a vintage fabric is different. If I get a, um, like a mud cloth or something like that, I still seem to want to do something to it. Kathy's just trolling. <laughs> She's not a real troll, but people don't put her in time out. Yeah, the slow stitching is just so relaxing. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about knotting that. All right. One, two... Do one more page, and then we can just start stitching things on. Okay. Yeah, I think this is allergies. Man. <clears throat> and it's funny. I've been trying to, um, for some reason, I either make books with paper or books with fabric, and I'm not getting the two of them together when I'm doing all the kind of stuff that's going in my little just because books. And I have no idea why. Oh, this that's why this thing's got such a tiny eye. I'm never going to get this one in. Uh, yeah, Sharon, there's just something about your own fabric that you have created from all the different ways that we can get color on fabric. John James needles. Yeah, I know I have a few of those. The ones I like are, this is a nice length for me. So it's about what, an inch and a half, but I need the big eye. I really need the long, big eye. Well, let's see, printed fabric that I've dyed. Do I have any of those? Ah, I don't have any that I've dyed, but these are all um, printed fabrics, commercial fabrics that I have you know, gessoed, collage, or gessoed and painted and alcohol inks over. I like that. Um, I don't, it depends. It really does. It depends. If you can see, if you can dye it and then turn it over and use the back size, back side, sorry, because if you do that, and I don't have a good example here, but if you, you know, you dye it and then you turn it over, you've got the print coming through a lot fainter. I'm not going to paint this book. No. Hey, Mariah. Welcome PM Artist Studio. Yeah, Margaret, the, the printed fabrics can get really interesting when you paint them. No, this book I will, um, I'm going to stitch in. This is, this is a just because book. It's going to be filled up with a lot of textures and uh, I think, I think a lot of color. Make sure I'm kind of, I'm not straight. Me and pins. Nettie says, I finally have some plies, some plies coming that I have wanted since I heard about junk journals. Archival inks are coming. Yay. Gina, hello. Oh my goodness. Haven't seen you in ages. How are you doing? What kind of a journal are you working on now? Hey, Shelby. Happy Wednesday to you. Okay, this needle's not that great either. Well, I'm definitely going to have to go down and see if they can help me figure out that favorite needle. You know, when you're going through a lot of fabric, I don't want a really fat needle. That, And for some reason, I have like gazillion tapestry needles, so those will be easy to, um, to just put out for the rusting. Wow. I don't know. I might need to run over and get Tulip Chenille number 18. I am writing that down. Let's see here. Get my little notepad up because I will forget. I love the tulip needles. I do love them. And I might just need to go get my other needle before I start doing this. 97 in North Carolina, so hot. You're making quilt, crazy quilt tags for two journals you've started. What did I do here? There we go. Wow, look at how offset I am on that. If doing bullions and oh, look at this. You are a wealth of information. I appreciate that.
bullions, million, million, milliners. Sorry, guys, I gotta. Uh, Margaret says, I also like collaging with small pieces or strips of sheer printed sheer fabric so that the pattern merges with what's underneath. Yes. Let's see. Do I have my, I've got a bunch of shears out for something else. Let's see. So here is just some sheer and it completely changes when you put it over the painted fabric and then you can stitch. And if you stitch on your mach machine, then you can cut away this fabric in places and have some of that pattern showing through. Angela says, I like slow stitching, stitching and started with a little book, one or two fabric pages at a time, but some fabric is a little stiff. So the stitches are not so much fun. Yeah. When I did my, my purple one that I had painted with the uh, Jacquard ink, I did not follow directions properly and it was way too thick and I didn't rinse it out well. And it was, it did, it made that pretty, um, pretty not fun, I guess is the way to put it. One thing you can do if you have stiff fabric, let's see how I can show it. Sometimes this will help. Okay, if you can see this. If this was like the edge of the table and you have your fabric and you take it, and you go back and forth like this. So like on my painted fabric, that's really stiff. If you go, I don't want to do that on my tape. It's not going to work right. Let's see here. If you go back and forth a whole bunch of times, you can start to soften it up. You can also um, hit it with some sandpaper. A pretty plain color palette on my desk. I know. Not like me, right? Not like me. But we'll see. It's a nice base to work with. That's the whole idea is just to kind of, once it's in book form, um, I want to do a bigger fabric book and then I'll probably work as individual pages. But I want to, uh, just get this into book form. Thank you, Shoshi. Kathy is in the process of making a slow stitch journal. Nice. I have just really found that for me, it is a meditation. I, I can't do traditional meditation. It just doesn't, I, I'm, I get distracted. Monkey mind going all over the place. And uh, I find any kind of stitching is kind of a meditation for me. All right, I don't need to be precise. You know, these things are not going to be lined up. There's more of one kind of lace on the other side. But again, this is just a base. Yeah, slow stitch is portable. Um, for me, it's lovely to have the stitching to do, you know, when I'm sitting on the couch and I'm not. Okay, now, see, I've got a little gather here. It's I can tack that down more, but I'm not going to worry if I've got stuff that's puckering up. But I like to, the idea is that the desk directly behind me should actually be empty for messy stuff, like keeping my jelly plate up. And I really was going to jelly print today, but I guess I'll do that maybe next week. I have a lot of fabric to paint too. And then right now the island in the studio is just completely covered. I've been pulling stuff out, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. All right. Not a fan of this needle either. Wow. So these must be all my dull needles here. Let's see what else we have. I'll try this one. All right. We have the pages and we have the cover. Hey, Marjorie. And see how it's coming out the sides. I'm not going to worry about that either because these are just the beginning. And I have this one left over. And I know what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to make it a fold out or a flip out on one side. 
So basically, this is what I have is just all my little scrap things. Here. Now, the fun part as far as I'm concerned. But it's only fun if... Where's my thread? If my needle will cooperate. Let's see. Is this one... I could test it first, huh? That would, like, be sensible, right, Susan? Hey, Terry, you snuck in. <laughs> wow, these needles are all... What did I do? I just brought all the crummy needles over here. I'm going to guess... I don't have any. You want to watch me paint fabric? Well, we can do that. That's kind of what I was going to do on the jelly print, jelly plate. But all right, I got to grab my other needle. It's in the tomato. And I bet these are going to slide. Yep. These are like butter. So I don't know what these are, but they have this wonderful eye. Let's see. They have this wonderful long eye and they're so sharp and I only have two of them. Okay, painting fabric, we can do that. I have lots to paint. I have a video I'm still editing of a batch of fabric that I had dyed that I was just going to do a quick little tutorial on. It's a chenille needle. Okay. Thank you so much. That will help me tremendously. So it's just a chenille needle with a, a long eye. Awesome. Hi, Marie. Oh yeah. Those tomato pin cushions. Those are product of our uh, childhood, right? What do people do to make your scans into decent digi prints? Make sure you're scanning at a high DPI. Be like this. Welcome. Glad you could join us. What are you working on today? And when it's all done, I can go back in and, you know, make the, the sides longer if I want to, anything like that. I'll cut off the threads that are sticking out. I'm not trying to sew the lace down flat necessarily. Um, I am much less precise about it than I was when I made the first lace journals for those 5,000 subscriber giveaway because I know that I'm going to do a lot of other things to it. Thank you, Terry. So we can paint fabric next week. I just took a wonderful class from um, Tansy Shoot. I don't remember her last name now. That's terrible. Uh, textile class. Yeah, this is the needle. And it was, you know, a lot of it was painting fabric. It's very abstract, which is not something I normally think, my brain doesn't think like, so it was a really good stretching. Okay, Sharon. <laughs> oh, so it's internet is not cooperating day. Is that what it is? And this is a little bit more than, than tacking, but not much. I'm not, because <clears throat> I know that this is not done. So I'm not worried that these are the stitches that have to uh, hold everything down. You know, forever and ever. You can use the right side. You can use the wrong side. It doesn't matter whether you go just through to the, the backing. And this is just an old sheet that I'm using on this. <clears throat> just audio? Oh, my. That is not fun. Well, so far, everything here is fine Internet-wise. Valerie is trimming white lint off my kid's black dress socks for her first job. Seriously, who makes these? Oh, my goodness. I can remember that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. And I'm also not going to worry if I've got long stitches. You probably can't see them. But I've got, you know, if I'm not paying attention and I get these really long stitches, it's like, eh. 
Um, it's this is all about just getting the first layer in because this book is going to be so fat and happy when it's done. And I love things where you can just grab the first thing that comes to your hand. Now, in my perfectionist days, I would be like, oh, no, look at these stupid long stitches that are showing. Now I'm like, nope, don't care. It's not going to show when I'm done. I know that. So Sharon doesn't want me to throw this whole uh, book into a vat of paint, huh? <laughs> oh, so, oh, you need a, there is a video, Marjorie, on my channel. It's an old one. It's probably two years old and I could do better now. But there is a video on my channel about rusting fabric. And the biggest thing about it is just, um, you know, water, vinegar, items that will rust and then just keep it moist until you achieve the level of rustness that you want. Rustness, is that a word? And then uh, you need to rinse it in, um, shoot, salt, salt, baking soda. I can't remember. Salt or baking soda or both. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe somebody else knows uh, to stop the rusting action. And that rusting fabric, rusted fabric is beautiful, but I personally find it hard to stitch through and I would love it if anybody has any tips. Valerie said, I had this kid when I was 43. The other three kids flew the kid. Oh, wow. So, so you're going back and revisiting things that are uh, you're out of practice on. This piece of colored lace that goes elsewhere. So this is a great use for lace that um, is maybe not pretty enough. Maybe when you first started, you know, gathering supplies, you bought a whole lot of acrylic lace, you know, not the um, the nice feeling lace. Because somehow when you start doing the, the variety of lace on top of each other, uh, the textures, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it seems to feel better. It, you don't notice the acrylicness. And of course, now I'll go back through which I didn't do before, and I will rat up a lot of my upper la layers. I'm not going to take the time to do that on the lower layers. But the acrylic lace, you know, you can certainly take your seam ripper to. So do we have any rust, rusted fabric experts here? I really need to uh, make room in the fabric closet though for more of the dyed fabrics. I've got like a stack of um, cotton and some silk that I want to dye in color families. Oh, you're right, Shelby, I've forgotten about that. She's got some nice ones and that hers are a little bit more recent and probably shorter because I think the one I did was across a couple of days of the whole process that I did which is fine, you know, I love it if you guys go back and watch old videos, but. Hey, Mona, you made it. How's that grandbaby of yours? Valerie said, I used to buy all my laces from thrift stores and can't find them there anymore. Yeah, I, I scored a lot of lace at thrift stores, but again, it was before I kind of knew what I was looking for. And so, I'll, you know, now I look for clothes that are cotton or linen because they're usually the ones that are going to have lace that is cotton that's going to take the dye a little bit better. Um, I don't want to deal with stuff that's not, I mean, I can still get color on, on the acrylics. I use my India inks or diluted paint or alcohol inks or, or, or you see how that goes. Oh, good to know, Shelby. So you can check out Oak House Journals. Now, one thing you could do, though, if you had all these pages, all this thing put together and it's acrylic and it's cotton, it's got a mix, you could dip it in a coffee or tea mixture and uh, get a lovely, you know, you'll get different tones because everything's going to take the color differently. 
I could do that. Some of this lace has already been coffee dyed. Kathy just bought a gallon size bag of damaged linens for five bucks. Awesome. Yeah, most of my vintage linens I got from a friend that was uh, cleaning out a shed. She had a shop and she'd closed down her shop and it was all this, this old damaged linens. She said, oh, they're stained and they have holes in them. I said, they're perfect for me then. So who has a favorite way of getting color on lace? Do you have one way that you do all the time or fabric? I tend to basically throw whatever I want. If I want to make green, if I want a fabric that's green, I will go into the studio and I will grab my green inks, my green watercolors, my green acrylic inks, my uh, green alcohol inks. I just grab it all. Hey, Journey. It's the baking soda that stops the rusting. Thank you, Journey. I said it had been a couple years. Nope, see, I said I wasn't going to knot it, and here I am. I'm knotting things, but that's fine. I love doilies, too. I bought a whole bunch at Esme's shop. She had to find a bunch of cotton ones and oh, they took color great. I've got some great shades of green ones. Chenille needle. I am so grateful for knowing that. Oh, I only have two of them and one of them is bent. So I really want to get a bunch of them and then I can just, I'm going to take all these other, I also have tons and tons of pins and I really only use pins very rarely. And so I'm just going to put them all out to rust. Oops. Thank you, mouse. Barbara was here and she left. Hey, Amanda. How are you doing lately? Coffee. Oh, food coloring is another one. Yeah. A lot of people like to use the Easter egg dyes. So I got to know, is anybody going to make a, a Just Because book along with me? Anybody going to do the challenge? Oh, Nettie's going to do some tie dyeing. That's fun. You know, and some of my favorite um, fabrics have been with diluted paint, you know, just acrylic paint. I mean, it's nice and cheap or paint water. You know, if you leave your brushes um, after you're painting and you leave them in the water and you get, you know, all these different colors uh, because we are on a septic system and we don't dump the water down into the sewer. You know, there's no sewer for us to dump it into. We don't dump the paint water into the septic. Um I just take scraps of cotton and stuff them in the water, the paint water, until it, lop, it stops everything up. And then I get just some really interesting colors. And because it's all smushed in the jar with the, the paint, you get these wrinkles and veins. I am really good, Amanda. Thank you. So I know watching, watching stitching, it's not the most exciting thing, but today I just really didn't have the brain width for it, for anything else. Yeah, Margaret, you got your hands full. I know. You'll make one one day. Well, the nice thing about a book like that or any of our projects, you know, you need to be creating because it's fun for you to create. You need to not be creating because you feel the pressure to create something. You don't want to create from, you know, oh, my goodness, I have to make something to sell. I have to make something. Um, sometimes you have to make something on pressure because you're making a gift, you know, for a certain time thing. But um, 
don't even have the desk space to get my fabrics down to choose for a book. Yeah, space is an issue for all of us, right? I recently moved um, all my commercial fabrics that were not big yardage. They're in um, nice size bins, but I moved it out to the garage so I could have room for my um, stuff that I want to dye or fabric that's already dyed in the fabric closet. And it's actually worked out better than I thought. I didn't think it was going to be, I thought it was going to be kind of a pain going in and out. But since we did the sunroom addition now and we don't have to go outside to go to the garage, it's a lot better. Hydrate. Amanda, what have you been working on lately? Gosh, you guys got me thinking about thrift stores. I don't want to go to the, I don't need anything. I have so much to use up. So much to use up. But now I'm thinking about how much fun it is to go to the thrift stores. Just getting these things tacked down. That is all we're doing. Sharon says, I always have fun creating. I just have way too many creative things I want to do at the same time. My creative self is a hot mess. I think that's the way it is, though. And I like, I mean, I know there are people out there that go from, you know, one project from start to finish. Um, Patty, I think that might be you. It is not me. I need to have several projects going at a time because sometimes like the red book, the red just because book, I'm going to love working in that book. But for some reason, it is not one that I want to grab and work on every night. I've got the colors, the fabrics all sorted out for it, but it's just, um, it's just not something that grabs me every night. So I need to make sure I have two or three of these little things going Amish country has great thrift stores as far as crafting items. Oh, wow. I bet. I never thought about that. Not a whole lot of those out here in California. Nettie says, I want to go to the thrift store soon because I haven't been to one in over a year. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of Etsy, Etsy shopping. That's been my, my version. I have a lot of, um, sorry, silk coming this week and then this uh, little shop in Florida that does beautiful um, beach finds. So she does stones that are small enough for me to use in the books and sea glass and things. And she does all the drilling, which is just really nice to have that all done. So I've got a box of that coming and, but yeah, I don't need anything else. You know, and I've got all this, all these leaves out in the garage the um, for cordage. They're all dry. And I would really like to, you know, get going on some cordage so that I will have those fibers to use. Uh, I don't know why I'm thinking so hard. It doesn't matter where it lands. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and sometimes you just, you know, like if I'm working on a canvas, you know, I just like to leave it sitting on the island and I can keep coming back to it and saying I need more of this or I need less of that. I do love, you know, I had forgotten. I mean, these feel so good. They just, the, the texture of all that lace piled up feels so good. This one, I'll probably leave this color, but now I'm, I'm tempted to make another one and uh, paint crazy. But I think this one, the color is going to come from the things I'm going to do to it. Or maybe I'll just do it all in neutral. I have not done a neutral book, so it could be all neutrals. And then I'm wondering how my twigs and stuff, you know, could I put twigs and rocks on my lace? Uh, I have not done that. And... Do I have any, I don't have any handy here. So let's see, we were talking about style. 
Do you have an artist that you admire that, you know, that you've kind of feel like that's, that's the style that you want to, um, I want to say emulate, but, you know, we are inspired by, I mean, I guess I would say inspiration. Okay. So who are, who are some of your artists that whether it doesn't matter what they're making, are they making journals? Are they making, you know, wall hangings? Are they knitters? Are they painters? You know, who inspires you? Neutral. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking Marjorie neutral would be really fun to do. Um, I haven't done that. And these little books, for some reason, I have not been um, motivated to put words and quotes and pictures in. Patricia inspires you, Mariah. Yeah. Her sense of color. Oh, my goodness. Valerie, it feels so yummy. I wish that I had touch a vision so you guys could feel it, but you, you know what it's like. And it's just something about cutting the little scraps. It just, you know, it's going to be an awesome book. <laughs> Sharon, I may not have had enough food supplies before COVID, but I was well stocked with thrift or craft supplies. Yep. My biggest thing was it, like thread. I bought as soon as stuff was going into lockdown, I was like, oh, no, if I can't get just basic white and brown thread. Gosh, I wish I do. I have any sticks. Oh, I do have a few. Wait a minute here. Let's see. I just don't know. Ah, all caught up in stuff. I don't know if we had. A lace, ah, where's one that's a, actually full page? It would really be a juxtaposition, wouldn't it, if we were putting things like, like this with the lace? I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Mariah says, I find a lot of inspiration in the hot, how do you say that? Hot, hot couture, crazy runway stuff. Sometimes they've got some really interesting ideas, don't they? All right, we need something here. Uh. Snip off just because that's really thick right there. Snip that off. Nettie says her style is mostly vintage and shabby chic. It's nice because then you can you can dress it up with shabby chic and you can dress it down with the vintage stuff. So if this is neutrals, then I can do beiges, browns. A little bit of black, maybe. I spend a lot of time on Pinterest for inspiration, but I, I couldn't tell you exactly a name. Mariah says, thinking about how to bring that crazy, the runway crazy, into a journal, a tag, or an ATC makes you real. <laughs> But it gets your brain pumping, right? And then you kind of go off in this other direction. Shoshi is a great inspiration. Rosemary Morris, Ariane Zercher, Prudence Mapstone is an awesome fiber artist. Yes. Uh, I know you guys have heard me in the group. I don't know if I've said it here, but fiber, F-I-B-R-E, artist take two in Australia, or yeah, New Zealand, Australia. Um, they have got a wonderful, they've got a YouTube series, and I'm surprised they don't have more subscribers. Uh, Corinne, if she's still here, she and I have taken, well, she's in the middle of the class, and I've taken a class over there, but they do wonderful interviews with textile artists, um, Friday's feature artist, Lorna Crane, um, Claire, Claire Ben, uh, Claire West Wellesley. A lot of people that do the Batsford books have been interviewed over there. 
highly recommend checking them out. Okay. This is just the tacking phase. I'm not going to worry about anything else, but there's one side. And oh, I could have kept going. Duh. That's okay. We'll come back over the top. Yeah, to see the ideas evolve when you get that inspiration. And um, I find that on Pinterest, at least it's easy where I can, I keep clicking the stuff that I like to my, to an inspiration board. And I realize I've got, you know, 10 things from the same person. It's like, okay, that's somebody I need to go investigate a little bit more. G care. I'm not, I'm probably mangling her name. Has been inspiring Nettie. Yeah, Instagram. Oh my goodness. The new Cruella movie because of inspiration. Did Izzy love it? I watched, I cannot believe I was so, I've had it on my list to watch for ages. And last night I finally sat down and watched My Octopus Teacher and one of the most exquisite documentaries that I have seen in a long time. Absolutely stunning. I'm probably one of the last people in the world to watch it, but I'm just so glad that I, I did. And I couldn't help but look at all the underwater photography and think about the textures and how that could be applied, you know, to art. I had gone off of Pinterest for a long time, Sharon, and went back to it, um, I guess, just basically for inspiration. I, I'm not like dedicated to dividing things up into all the little categories and things. I just have a couple main boards just so that I can go back through and peruse my boards. And then they usually lead me to artists. Um, my octopus teacher. And oh, my goodness. Let's see here. I can't type. And it was just wonderful. More adult, less kid. Oh, okay. It's a bit dark like the new Disney stuff is. All right, yeah. Hadn't actually watched a documentary in a while and had forgotten what I love most about them is just that <clears throat> it's exquisite storytelling. Well, I think, you know, now how many people, okay, speaking of inspiration, do you keep a sketchbook? Do you, you know, I, I'm not, a, I'm, I can't draw worth beans, but I do make myself little notes in a sketchbook, you know, kind of like, drawing out the shapes with little notes about what I might use as far as um, fabrics and layout and that sort of thing. But I see a lot of artists, uh, they will, especially like painters, they'll paint something just for the experimental phase and they'll chop up the pieces and then put them in a sketchbook and leave little notes. Um, a lot of people that can draw, they will, you know, literally draw out the, the template for what they're going to do ahead of time. Mariah, yeah, Mariah and Patricia at PM Artist Studio, they keep idea books and color guides. Yeah, and if you want to know how to mix your paints to get a certain color or to get a certain texture, your different texture paints, uh, definitely check out PM Artist Studio because they have got a backlog of some wonderful live streams where you can learn a lot of this stuff and they've got some freebie downloads Sharon says, there's an incredible Australian photographer you found on Instagram who posts photos, videos of the ocean. There is a video of what waves look like from under the water I'd never considered before. Yeah, that I, I would like to know that photographer too. The uh, My octopus teacher was shot in um, the guys in uh, South Africa, I believe. The kelp forests and um, just the different fish, the 
oh, just so much color, of course, the brilliant color. And you think about how you could um, maybe translate that to a textile. It's kind of exciting. Yes, the water dances, absolutely. All right, so all in neutral. Did you guys speak up? What did you think about putting sticks and foliage in here? I just think that it doesn't quite work on the lace. It's my problem. I'm not quite sure what, I guess maybe I need to do like a canvas book. I don't know. Do a little pleat in here because I want to keep it right there at the edge. And I get concentrating and then I forget to talk. <laughs> Zach Knoll, N-O-Y-L-E, -N does some of the water photography. Ooh, definitely go check that out. When I'm doing um, the textile landscapes, that's what I like to do is take a photograph and then try and map out just just the basics of the colors you know what's where the tones that's why i know i need to do a lot of fabric dyeing is i do not have enough of the tonal variety that i want right now for a couple of projects hey angela how you doing girl decorate with pearl necklace and pearl buttons Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I, def I think this will be a good place to put a lot of bling. I have a lot of bling that I want to uh, start working through. Uh, the other nice thing about doing stuff like you don't have to even stop to think, am I got it on the right side of you know, the fabric? Michelle Pettigrew, written like that one word, all lowercase mesmerizing thank you sharon it's always great to find new places to be inspired and a little something else right there all these little bits they find a home eventually and then if I get to the end of a project like this and I have a whole bunch of little bits that don't seem, you know, not enough to like try and put in a shoebox or something, I just stick them in a jar and put some ink in there with some water and just let them soak up some color. Angela is playing and you feel really good about some posts that you're going to be sharing soon. That's good. I want you feeling good. <clears throat> Well, it's a huge thing for you. I know that. And you know that. And let's give yourself credit for that, right? Oh, Journey, yes. Sophie de Court in Belgium. Her, um, what does she call them? The, the bindings that she's so well known for? Her work is lovely. I really enjoy her. Perhaps not a super well-known one, um, but I always get inspired when I look at her stuff on Instagram is Jude's Art Creations. If you like kind of a vintage junkie journal kind of thing, I bought one of her journals and I'm. it gave me some ideas. Oh, and Susie, uh, Susie Quaif, Q-U-A-I-F-E, I think it is. Ah, oh, beautiful work. Her stuff with textiles is really, really fun. All right, let's just use up this little bit of thread here. You are being much nicer to yourself, Angela. That's good. I want you to be nice because otherwise I'll have to give you a bad time about not being nice to my friend. Ah. 
always right there at the end. The needle either comes unthreaded <laughs> or it gets jammed. And that's okay. Because even if there's like a loop of thread, again, you can just tack something back over the top of this. Hey, Sparrow Harker Designs, I was I owe you a, a response over on YouTube, and I've forgotten your first name. Yeah, isn't she amazing? Her work just like, uh, mm. I have two of her little journals, not one of her textile ones. Uh, they have a little bit of textile in them, but oh. I, I just stalk her all the time. I would go back to all her old Instagram posts. She's got two accounts. Um, creating Down Under is the second account that's got some stuff because she had some problems with her Instagram account for a while. Hey, Randy, how are you doing today? Ah, Angela, you know, what's, what's a day without a little bit of waterworks, right? I can blame mine on my allergies today. I am so glad I switched needles and I am so glad uh, that somebody told me that this is a chenille 18. Yeah, I mean, th this is a place to share your favorites. You know, make sure that we all go check these people out because we can all be inspired. So those of you that came in late, what I started with is I had, for whatever reason, I had a bunch of squares of lace and I just joined them with some lace to make a hinge and then I will keep layering them up and they will become a little fabric just because book. Ah, thank you, Terry. You've, I know. Me too. I've pinned everything that she's ever made. Absolutely. And you found Sophie. Thank you. Oh, um, Jude's Art Creations. Nettie loves Dee Dee. Dee Dee does some great junk journal stuff. All right. This might just about... And I'm not going to worry that the little sheet is showing through because I'm so where so nowhere near done. Blah, 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 blah. Well, they're my they're my meditation, Angela. That's not that they're that fast because there's not that many pages in the book. I mean, you know, this little thing's just got uh, five pages plus the cover. So I just I sit with them in the evenings. The thing is, is I need to get more of them to the stage where I can sit with them in the evenings. Yeah, Jude is wonderful. I just, I, I love her stuff. Yeah, the, I'm definitely going to have to do another one, maybe another green one, because working in just neutrals will be probably different. This is going to be... Um, It'll be kind of challenging to do it all in new tools, I think, which will be good. It's good to challenge ourselves. Terry is being the awesome moderator that she is and getting all these links up to share. If you guys have something going on that you want to share that hasn't been shared, you have a shop or something um, or a channel that you need some love on, let us know so that Terry keeps a list. So those of you that come to the lives, this is a great chance for you to get, you know, some free promotion. I appreciate the, the people joining us. Yeah, I, you know, I love neutrals too, but I haven't done a lot with them lately. And uh, so it's, it's good to put yourself into positions that will challenge you. But I think I'm going to have to do another one of these. I might. I might just put together another real quick one with a lace with a uh, felt base. So I can do one lace neutrals and one that's got um, some bright colors. Oh yeah, watching all the natural dyeing and stuff. Rustic um, 
Rustic Studio, is that another one? Yeah, Zoe was getting ready. My husband was taking her out for a walk. He, he usually takes a lunch break about now and then takes her out for a walk. So she gets so excited. She is quick, I know. Super quick. And super awesome. Enchanted Dreams, yes. Lori, sometimes she can join us and sometimes she can't. But she has, the other thing I love about Lori is she posts all these wonderful motivating quotes. You are awesome, Terry. There's no getting better about it. All right. So now the hinge needs a little bit more attention. I can grab something that's a little bigger. It's all about the overlap, building up these layers. So maybe what I'll do is come in with some um, something that's not going to change the hand of the fabric. Just maybe some really, really watered down uh, inks in neutral colors, and I might... I might drip some on the pages. Enchanted Dreams is Lori Edwards. Hey, Janet, checking in from work. If you love stitching, you should be following um, Janet's channel, or Janet on Instagram is where she's been posting all her stuff. So Janet, these might look a little bit like your blue laced book you won because that's kind of what I'm doing, building up for another one. The same but different. <laughs> no idea, I buried my clock, okay. So tonight I can tell you that I will be sitting stitching lace onto the rest of these pages. Yeah, is it just Rustic Studio? Um, she's also, I think, Australia or New Zealand. I think she's Australia. All about uh, dying natural plants. Thank you, guys. I'm glad you like my books. You started a book yesterday? Yay! Sparrowhawker, I think you had talked about on YouTube, and I, like I said, I'm sorry that I'm late in getting back to you over there, um, about having trouble getting rid of the perfectionist. And I think I was thinking about that. I was thinking, you know, for me, I had such a horrible experience with trying to do perfect embroidery when I was a kid that once I finally was able to shut up that voice, for me, that was like life changing for me. I did not want to be perfect. I wanted to be me. Hey, Penny. How are you doing today? But I still have those days where I have to um, kind of like shut myself up and say, come on, knock it off. Who do you, you know, this is not brain surgery. The world is not going to end tomorrow if I sew something crooked, if I make a knot and leave it showing, if I leave loose threads. Um, I don't hear my grandmother's voice anymore or my grandmother's friend that was teaching me embroidery. And that's just been really freeing. Yeah, I need to shoot. Rita, I think is her... Does anybody know who I'm talking about? <laughs> I'll have to find, you know, I should put together some, some good places with the natural dyeing. For me, as much as I love the natural dyeing process, and I'm glad I've learned more about it, especially with the classes that I took with Alice Fox, you know, I, at my age, it's a lot of time, and I just don't have the energy that I used to have to do that kind of stuff. I just don't. 
So I, I won't do as much of that as I will with taking it the easy way, um, which is still beautiful and still fun by using my paints and inks. I just love being able to use up all these little scraps that some people would say were too small. That's fine if it's too small for them, but I'm liking it. Rustic Studios and Music Site. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, now it's going to bug me. We're going to look it up. We're going to see who it is. It is. Oh, Gone Rustic, I bet, is what it's called. I bet that's what it's called. G-O-N-E. Yes, Gone Rustic. over on Instagram. Those of you that came in late, we're talking about inspiring people to follow. <coughs> yeah, Sharon, it, there's a lot of it that's just wonderful and I admire and I think if I had started something like that in my 20s or 30s or 40s, maybe even in my 50s, but now at 63, I just... I don't work as fast as I used to, and there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy the pace that I'm working at, but um, I need to be kind to myself. See, it's coming together. So I leave it when it's at this point, stuff is still flopping around because I know I'm gonna come back and hide these stitches with little things. And so if I need to add more lace to fill in little holes. So that gives me an idea on So if this is the cover, so I'll need to make this cover maybe just a little bigger. I like when stuff sticks out, but then the more I build it up, it's going to stick out even more. So I will probably, when I do the inside of this, I'm probably going to take a really big piece of lace to go like that for the cover. I think that would give me enough, maybe, closer, I'm getting closer. Yeah, so if I do that, then I've got a large enough piece and I can just build it out a little bit more. And I probably have some more of this thicker stuff, and then that'll make the cover even thicker. So I know that's what I'm going to do there. All right. So you can't see the hinge on that side. Now I just need to join these a little bit. I could make it really easy and just join it like that. That would work, although it doesn't go with what I want to do, so. Angela says, I use methods to get the vibe for my paper. It's very time consuming, but I get some awesome stuff that inspires me and makes me happy. That's it. You know, and, and it doesn't matter. I mean, maybe you watch a video of somebody that's doing something very precise and mad scientist or, or very scientific way, and then you say, no, I'm going to put on my mad scientist hat and go all crazy. And that's what you do. Um, but you got the insp inspiration maybe from something else. Thank you, Sparrowhawker Designs. I The neutral is going to be, um, it'll be a bit of a challenge for me, which will be fun. Is there some kind of style or design or colorway or something that you've thought, okay, I love this, but I haven't done it yet. It's on my list, or for some reason I'm intimidated by the idea of starting something like this. Is there anything like that? Does that make any sense at all? And this would be a whole lot easier if you started with the right size pages to start with, but these were things I found in my stash box and I really kind of just wanted to use them up. Rita Sumner's, yes. 
Thank you. Yeah, she's um, she does some really beautiful work, really beautiful work. Neutrals are very calming. Although for me, the green was very calming too, which is why this piece, which is very strange, um, it's very strange and I don't know where it's gonna go, but these were all the little scraps of green that had no dye to them. Maybe before I do anything else to it, I might get out some green inks and do some stuff to it and build it up that way. But this is gonna be an interesting wall hanging because greens are calming to me since it's my favorite color. Loretta, thank you for saying her name. I just, I keep forgetting her name. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, Loretta's work is just absolutely beautiful. She was one of the first um, people I followed. And in fact, did you put up her channel, uh, Terry? I don't know if you did or not. But if you love stitching, you need to go check her out. So Angelus is working with very bright, bold colors and putting them with something you wouldn't normally do. Ooh, that's a great challenge for you then. Just do it just because. Yep, it doesn't have to hit a particular goal. Loretta says, I'm intimidated by brights. Just can't bring myself to use them. I've used, whoops, disappeared. Uh, I've used some in an altered book I did and it was hard for me not to tone it down. Yeah, I continually, if, if it's fabric, I grab a piece of, um, you know, sheer organza or something to put over it. And if it's paint, I grab the gesso. And okay, here's the really strange thing is if I am jelly printing, I love to jelly print with bright colors, but then I never do anything with them. Yeah, you have to go look at, Loretta is Sparrowhawker Designs. I just had an absolute brain burp and could not remember her name until Janet said it. So I think you just put that up there. And yeah, she, um, I think I saw, I found you before I was looking at any of the stuff by Anne Handmade and Brooke, 52, who's doing the 52 tags handmade. Yes, lots of new people to follow. I don't want that big of a piece. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the pages once I get, I guess it's just going to be embroidery and see if I can do clusters that are all neutral. This will be a good challenge. For me, the challenge is to do something that's not green. <laughs> I just always want to grab the green because it makes me happy. So it's probably really hard for some people, some of you that are more um, precise stitchers to see me doing all this willy nilly stuff. And maybe it's a good thing you can't see all the long stitches that are showing as easily. Oh. Um, I know, isn't Terry been great by sharing all these great artists for us? Green is nature's neutral. Oh, I love it. That's a, I'm going to use that phrase. Janet said she found me, which led her to Anne, which led her to Loretta. That's terrific. See, and to me, this is what Alive is about. Let's let's share this kind of stuff. And when you find somebody that really inspires you, if you are in my Facebook group, um, which I invite all of you to join if you're not a part of already, it's a small group and we just, we share not just stitching, not stitch journals, we, we share all kinds of art. Um, I would love to have you share, you know, people that inspire you in there as well. Come on over and join us. It's Susan Taylor Brown Creative Circle. There should be a link in the description below this video. Oh, the Slow Stitch Community Group is very good too. Also Stitch Meditations, um, which is Liz Kettleman. Oh, and if you are on Liz Kettleman's, okay, Liz Kettleman runs Stitch Meditations. There is a Facebook group. You can go to her website and get on her 
mailing list and she is doing a free webinar next month all about thread and just the different um the oh, shoot the words escaping me the way different threads act in different situations when you might want to you know use a certain thread what you might do differently when you're using a thread and you have this issue So definitely check out Stitch Meditations if you are interested in more things about thread. I was so excited. It's I think the the webinar is next Sunday. This coming up Sunday, yeah. All right, this is too long because I really want this to be bits and pieces. It always takes me about, you know, half hour or so on the project to say, okay, I'm ready to, I'm ready to dive into this. Yeah, it's this Sunday. You're right. It's this Sunday. I was thinking next Sunday, but it's this Sunday. Um, well, type in stitch meditations. It's, let me see. Let me see. If you go to Stitch, I'm sorry, it's Kettle, K-E-T-T-L-E. -T -T -E. So it's uh, Liz Kettle. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. You were on top of it. And it's this Sunday. You didn't know it was a real thing until Abby from Purple Cottage Crafts introduced you to it. Yes. Okay. And I'm so jealous, guys. Abby has moved to Montana, and now she was right next to Angela Chadwick. Uh, I don't remember all her three three of her names, but the two of them are going to get to art together. How cool is that? Yeah, the thread thing looks really interesting because um, I – like I said before, just kind of came to fibers and fabric about five years or three years ago. And there's so much to learn. Great method to handle chronic pain. Yep. Yeah, if we were talking about the grab bag kind of style of stitching, um, just little short little things. Um, that came from another gal that's in the Stitch Meditations group. All right, I will, I'm going to stay until I get this, even though I'm on time here, I am going to stay until I get this last little bit of the hinge covered up. I need some variety. Just a little bit of variety. There we go. Oh, yeah. You know, every time a, a trend comes back around, because there's nothing new under the sun, anytime a trend comes back around, it's got a slightly different name. You know, somebody said, well, isn't it embroidery? Well, isn't it just, you know, um, crazy quilting? And it, it's got a lot of similarities to all of that stuff. I think you do it, you call it whatever works for you. Um, I started off doing the stitch meditations, which were the little tiny um, squares. There's a book just called Slow Stitch. Yeah, it's some great stuff over there. I Okay, stitch meditations is a place I go to for motivation. I just go to the um, photos and just page through all the photos sometimes because it's so inspiring. Another chunk. All right, we almost got the hinge done. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate you posting the group. Invite everybody to come over there to join. And oh, okay, Journey, thanks for joining us for a while. You have a great day. I'm just about done here. I usually go, for those of you that are new, I usually go until about, uh, for about an hour and a half. 
It's about how long my voice can last. All right. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. Now, you could, if you did not want to do all this stitching, you absolutely could uh, lay down all your little scraps on some Bonda web or dissolvable interfacing, whichever you like to use, and you know get it all attached in a hurry that way. Nothing wrong with that. And then go back in and do your stitching. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, Bonda web kind of stuff with trying to use up all my giant stash of larger fabrics that are not ones that I'm going to die. Oh, Shoshi, that is a great way to end this. Shoshi says, each of us is an inspiration and it's important to listen to ourselves. Technique can be learned from others. Inspiration is from within us. Yes, I, I absolutely agree that we need to reach deep inside ourselves. And you guys know, those of you that have been around for a while, that one of the things that I think is the most important for us all to find is our inner warrior. You need to be brave enough to do your work your way and not worry if it's not matching some other expectations. It's fine. You know, challenges are great. Um, looking at other inspiration photos are great. Um, things, you know, where one person is giving you, you know, pick a stick or any of that kind of stuff. That's all awesome if it gets you creating. But the biggest thing is that you need to do it your way. You know, we all start off emulating somebody, but you're not going to be happy. I don't believe, this is my opinion, I don't believe you're going to be happy producing carbon copies of somebody else's work. You're going to be happy when you give in and say, okay, like Angela was just saying, I don't care. This is why it just because work, book works. I don't care if you're not supposed to put, you know, all the colors in the pot together because you're going to get mud. I happen to like mud. I want mud. Do what you're feeling. Follow your feeling. Follow your own heart. And that's where people notice it in your work. You think, okay, I'm making a, a fabric book. It's an inanimate object. You know, how is anybody going to be able to tell? But they can tell. They absolutely can tell if you are true to yourself when you are creating or if you are just trying to um, do a paint by number version of somebody else's work. So if you think of nothing else this week, please think about being true to your artist's heart. Please march to the beat of your own drummer. Techniques can be learned, but nobody else, nobody else can make the kind of art that you can make. You are the only one that can do you and you are a magnificent version of you absolutely a wonderful version of you. Yeah, you can tell if you're not true to yourself when you create. That's it exactly. All right, one page is done. This is going to be a nice sized book. So I just need to do two more pages and then I will stitch it together in book form. I'll just do a little pamphlet stitch with this. But that's about all for my voice today. I need to go have some tea to rest it up. I am so grateful for all of you guys for hanging with me today. Thank you so much. Go off and be your own awesome artistic selves. You are so welcome, Loretta. Thanks for joining us. I hope you'll come back again. All right. See you in the group. Those of you that are there, those of you that are not in the group, maybe I will see you here next week, uh, same time on Wednesdays. All right. Bye-bye, guys. See you next time. Thank you. Oh, Sharon. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I don't have a folder, a piece of paper handy, but I will show you what I was talking about with this. I'm sorry. Glad for the reminder. If this was a file folder. Yes, Terry, you weave your energy into your work. All you would do, I'm just, I mean, this is not nothing new. This is just what I was trying to explain, but you needed to see it. I would just fold it up and fold it over. 
and I would stitch down the center, down the center and down the sides. I stitch it down the center so that it doesn't pop open. That's all it is, Sharon. You can do it with a file folder. You can do it with cardstock, all that kind of stuff. All right. Dina, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Linda, you have a great day too. Margaret's going to go get some tea. Yep. Have a super rest of your day. All right, folks. Yes, exactly. Same kind of idea. I knew I wasn't explaining it very well when we were talking about it. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.